Hello, welcome to Pathways to Profitability. My name is Eric Segelbaum. I'm the founder and chief innovation officer of Sommelier Hospitality Consulting, and I am here today to talk to you exactly about sommeliers. More specifically, why now more than ever, a sommelier is one of the most important people you can employ in your restaurant. Now, let me get this right out of the way. Yes, I'm a sommelier, clearly, right? This is not coming from a point of bias. I'm not doing this because I just love being a psalm. Of course, I love being a psalm. I'm telling you this though because sommeliers have a unique capacity to add tremendous amounts of gross revenue, profit, and value to your business unlike just about any other position. And I understand that because sommeliers tend to represent a high labor line item, whether they're salaried or hourly, that they're generally the first to be cut on a shift or the first to be laid off when that is necessary, such as during you know a global pandemic. And they're often the last to be brought on, again, because they're a high labor item. But the ROI of a good sommelier is huge. The return on investment of having a specialist in your highest profit center is key. Now let's break this down for a minute. Most restaurants, I'm excluding fast food and super casual. I'm talking anything from like mid-scale casual to fine dining. Most restaurants, a typical product mix breakdown is roughly 60 to 70% food, 30 to 40% beverage. Some, some have more, some have less, but that's generally where the industry averages out. However, this is the key point. Food runs at a much higher cost. So if you look at profit, basically profit contribution or contribution margin, the wine or beverage program of most restaurants generally contributes 70 to 95% of the gross profit dollars to the operation, even though they don't contribute the, the same uh, percentage of revenue breakdown. That's for a number of reasons. Number one, the labor cost, <clears throat> pardon me, the labor cost for that department is low. There's not a lot of prep issues, right? You don't have to worry about spoilage as much. Sure, yeah, wines by the glass can go bad, bottles can get broken, but it's not like if you order too much meat and you can't sell it or too much fish and it goes bad, right? It's right down the drain. You don't have to worry about fabrication and loss. So a five pound side of salmon, depending on who's butchering it, might le yield you 10 eight ounce portions, it might yield you six eight ounce portions. It really all depends, right? So you've got yield issues. You've got the same weight of product not being the same in the kitchen, right? That's why there's a lot of cost of goods and then also the labor cost to do this fabrication work. Psalms, you don't have to worry about that, right? The, the cost to support a beverage program are minimal. It's a lot of sealed product coming in, pre-yielded, pre-costed. You know every bottle of wine costs you X and every bottle of that wine will sell for Y, so you don't have to worry about paying a different amount. You don't have fluctuations in the cost of these commodities. And uh, ultimately they go out to a guest with a known cost of goods and a very limited margin, I'm sorry, a very limited uh, labor cost to get them out. Plus again, spoilage and loss limited, right? Now, I want you to think about this. We're talking about the most significant contributor to profit margin. Having a specialist in that category who is uniquely qualified to both train your staff and interact with your guests to promote excitement is huge. Imagine if you could have your executive chef talking to every guest taking their food order, right? Can't do that, that's not practical. But what the sommelier is, is basically the executive wine chef or the executive beverage chef talking to as many guests as they can about their order. A guest is more likely to trust in them that they built this beverage program and they really have the guest's best interests in heart. They can steer guests into high margin or high dollar value things more so than if a guest were just looking at a list on their own. Now, lastly, I want you to think about this. Most restaurants spend a ton of money on something that is a high cost, low profit center, and that is their pastry department. Even if you're buying bread, not baking in a house, think about what patisserie means. It has a much higher cost of goods because just the inputs are more expensive. It has a much higher labor cost because a lot of pastry is very time consuming, especially if you're making doughs and proofing them and letting them rise and all that stuff, right? So there's a lot more cost to put out something that represents maybe five to 7% of your product mix if you're lucky and also at what cost margin, right? Generally speaking, 50, 60% cost, 70% cost. A lot of restaurants will have an executive pastry chef, maybe a pastry sous chef and one or two or three or even more hourly employees to pastry. A lot of pastry desserts are given away. Bread is given away if you're baking your own. Desserts are often given away for special occasions for VIPs, etc. So you're gonna put so much labor sink into something that is an incredibly high cost, incredibly low profit margin category. Why would you not put a little bit extra labor dollars into something that is incredibly high revenue generating at very high profitability levels? A sommelier is uniquely qualified to train your staff 
stop how to move the needle. A sommelier is uniquely qualified on how to make your guests feel great about their purchase, how to move their net average spend, whether it's by the bottle or by the glass. A sommelier is uniquely qualified to enhance a guest experience while enhancing the revenue they bring in. And there's one more other critically important thing that a sommelier provides. Okay, we are as an industry, SOM managers, right? There are very few SOMs, even in fine dining, that all they do is sommelier and that's it, right? We perform other functions vital to the operation of the front of the house. Now, I wanna be clear. I'm not discounting the value of bussers, of hosts, of servers, of food runners. I'm not. They are vitally important and in no way am I suggesting that you shouldn't run with those people. What I am suggesting is that a sommelier can do their job while also helping to take orders, run food, bus, clear, and reset tables, seat guests, step in and management functions if there's an issue that needs to be handled, a refire, a complaint, anything that would require a manager that you're comfortable letting your sommelier handle. So yes, we can be expensive labor items, but at the same token, we can perform jobs that any front of the house person is capable of doing or we can perform all of those jobs, but it's not necessarily the same. Now, again, I'm not saying don't have food runners if your business model calls for food runners, but a sommelier can run food. Can a food runner talk about the merits or the differences between these two Cabernets from Yountville? Probably not. So right now, more than ever, when every ounce of revenue is important, every penny coming in is vital, and the profit margin of every penny coming in is vital, you would be foolish as an operator not to have a specialist that can help drive that revenue, drive that profitability, and also step in to enhance guest experience and fill the gap of maybe not being able to have as many servers or bussers or runners as hosts as you would want to because you can't operate at full capacity. Something to think about. Thank you very much. This has been Pathways to Profitability. I'm your host, Eric Sagalow. Take care.